Pathology MCQs from uh, JITMER exams. Uh, we are taking from 2006 to 2014. Uh, the questions have been arranged year wise, so they will be on variety of topics. Uh, I personally feel this is a better way to uh, discuss rather than going by uh, individual topics because uh, this is the way we have to address them in the exams also. Uh, so it's better that we uh, keep our options open, mind open and approach each MCQ individually. If we do it topic wise, then what happens? We are prejudiced and uh, the MCQs go on repeating and immediately we answer very quickly. But once we are doing in this pattern, we have to jump from one topic to another topic. So we have to adapt to that new topic, understand those uh, options. So obviously it requires more time. So I personally feel that it's better we go this way. So I'll be dealing it paper wise, year wise with variety of topics. So let us get started with the, uh, the first question from 2006. Anti-mitochondrial antibodies are seen in primary biliary cirrhosis, autoimmune hepatitis, sclerosing cholangitis, secondary biliary cirrhosis. Uh, I would like to uh, just repeat the general instructions I keep giving in each of my classes every time. A. Read the question correctly before you look at the options because questions these days are turning very very tricky. Of course this is somewhere from 2006 so they are mostly straightforward questions but as uh, we keep moving towards 14, 15, 16 you will realize that questions have turned very tricky. There is generally a fix in the stem of the question itself so please read the stem of the question correctly. Try to understand what they want before jumping to the options. And then once you start looking at the options, analyze the options, each of these uh, options, each of the options these days are quite related to each other. They are very close. It's not like uh, uh, totally unrelated options are given and you can easily rule them out. No, as you can see from this MCQ all, also, they are talking about antibodies and they have given autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, sclerosing cholangitis and secondary biliary. At least in three of them, we will have antibodies. So it's not like you can easily rule them out. So options are quite close to each other. So analyze them very quickly. Of course, all this you will have to do in fractions of seconds. Apply the uh, prepared knowledge what you already have and then uh, try to solve in the light of the question that has been asked. Okay, right. So keep always keep the question at the back of your mind. Here they want from us anti-mitochondrial antibodies. Where are they seen? So let us look at some literature review on this. I will be presenting to you literature from some of the most authentic textbooks of pathology like Robbins, uh, Pathological Basis of Disease, 9th edition which is the latest one and uh, some of the extracts are from Rubin's Pathology which is another standard textbook. Uh, some of the extracts from Chandrasoma Taylor uh, Concise Pathology, another standard textbook. There are uh, experts which have been taken from varieties of other textbooks of pathology like Ackerman's uh, histopathology, Sternberg's histopathology, varieties of them I have taken. Okay, all of them are authenticated, especially I have taken the most accepted literature whenever there is a controversy between the answers. If two options are controversial, some literature says goes for one option, the other literatures go for the other option, then I have tried, tried to take the most authentic text. Sometimes uh, even I have tried to include the WHO recycles which are considered the most standard uh, authenticated text. I have tried to include from that. Uh, so uh, this let us review at some literature from Robbins uh, which says that primary, we are talking about primary biliary cirrhosis. Let us see what it has got to offer. Primary biliary cirrhosis is an autoimmune disease uh, associated with other autoimmune disorders, varieties of autoimmune disorders and as you know. Uh, the exact trigger in most of these autoimmune diseases is not known. What exactly triggers the disease? What exactly is the etiology? Which is the precise antigen against which antibodies are formed is not known exactly. But of course, research has paved a lot of way. We have come to know a lot of antibodies. In PBC, um, anti -mito mitochondrial antibodies are the most characteristic laboratory findings in PBC. Okay. So our answer we have already got it in this statement itself. Now let us understand what are these anti-mitochondrial antibodies and some more questions that can be derived from this uh, text. 
So anti mitochondrial antibodies are the characteristic uh, laboratory finding in PBC. They recognize the E2 component of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Now this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex uh, is present on the uh, immunological cells and PDC specific T cells are also present in these patients. What happens? Uh, it these antibodies are directed against the E2 component, which is a part subunit of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. This is another MCQ that has been asked several times. Anti-mitochondrial antibodies in primary biliary cirrhosis are directed against E2 component of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. That's the answer for that. Okay. Uh, apart from the these uh, antibodies, the other features that suggest that PBC is an immunological or autoimmune disease is presence of T cells. Okay. And uh, aberrant expression of MSC class 2 molecules on the bile ductal epithelium in these patients. The ductal epithelial cells of the bile ducts express MSC molecules in an aberrant fashion. That is another clue towards autoimmune origin. So, a third MCQ props up from this, uh, uh, this information about uh, primary biliary cirrhosis, which has been asked in some of the entrance exams. All the following statements support the autoimmune nature of primary biliary cirrhosis except presence of anti-mitochondrial antibody, yes, it supports autoimmune nature, presence of uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex specific T cells, PDC specific T cells, yes, that supports, presence of aberrant MSC class 2 molecule expression on bile ductal epithelial cells, yes, that supports, presence of anti-nuclear antibody. Of course, anti-nuclear antibody may or may not be present in all cases of PBC. So, that is not very specific. So, that does not support, directly provide a support for autoimmune nature of PBC. But these first three factors definitely support uh, autoimmune origin of the PBC. Okay. Uh, so, there are also uh, uh, autoreactive T cells accumulating around the bile ducts. These bile ducts are surrounded by lymphoid infiltrate. They are all T lymphocytes which are autoreactive and uh, they, the and antibodies are present against other cellular components also like nuclear core proteins, centromeric proteins. These are all indirect evidences but the first three are direct evidences of autoimmune nature of PBC. So, from this itself, this, this information, piece of information we can gather three very commonly asked MCQs on PBC. Now, let us go through a table which differentiates primary biliary cirrhosis from primary sclerosing cholangitis which are two very closely related topics, very favorite topics for generating MCQs in entrance exams. PBC, PBC occurs at slightly older age, so the median age is 50, so it is seen in a disease of 50s and 60s. So you can just remember PBC is a uh, disease of postmenopausal women, that is how we remember because that is more common in women, 90% of the patients are females. So, PBC is a disease of postmenopausal women. Okay. Whenever the word PDC, PBC comes, primary biliary cirrhosis, just remember a lady who's attained menopause, she has every chance of developing this. Whereas PSC, primary sclerosing cholangitis, is the disease of an active male. Somebody in his 30s, 40s going for his active job daily, that person has chances of developing. So, it's more common in males and median age is 30 years. Associated conditions, PBC is associated with other autoimmune diseases, many of them, but most important associations are Jogren syndrome, scleroderma and thyroid disease. Among the thyroids, it, it is uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis and Graves disease which are commonly associated with PBC. Whereas PSC, that is primary sclerosing cholangitis is associated with IBD, inflammatory bubble disease, 70% cases show an association. So, that is a very strong association. So, any patient of Sclerosing cholangitis should be screened for Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. IBD is a very common association. They can also have pancreatitis. They can also have retroperitoneal fibrosis, idiopathic retroperitoneal fibrosis, Rothmund disease. It's called Rothmund disease, idiopathic retroperitoneal fibrosis. Okay. Serology 95% patients have anti mitochondrial antibodies. So it's a very specific antibody, highly specific 95% cases, only 50% have anti-nuclear antibody. So, may or may not be present, ANA may or may not be present in uh, PBC. So, ANA is not 
sensitive, it's not sensitive, only 50% patients will have. So, by just testing ANA, you cannot pick up all PBC cases, okay. ANA is also not specific because it is also present in other immunological diseases like SLE. ANA anti-nuclear antibodies can be present in variety of autoimmune diseases. So, it is not specific for PBC, it is not sensitive for PBC. So, the uh, another uh, MCQ that is generated from this information is which of the following is a sensitive and specific, highly sensitive and specific antibody marker for uh, primary biliary cirrhosis. The answer should be anti-mitochondrial antibodies because ANA and anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, ANCAs, are not very sensitive and specific. ANCA is seen in 40% cases, not sensitive. And ANCA is also seen in other conditions like vaginal granulomatosis, polyangitis, microscopic polyangitis, Chuck Strauss disease and all those conditions. So, it is not specific. AMA is specific, highly specific and highly sensitive. In PSC, AMA is not at all present or present in very few cases, 0 to 5 percent. 6 percent patients have uh, ANA, anti -nu uh, nuclear antibody, okay. So, not sensitive there. 65 percent have ANCA. So, among the available antibodies for uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis, it is anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody that appears to be relatively more sensitive. It is also not very, very sensitive because we can miss 35 percent cases. Only 65 percent are positive, but still we can pick up 65 percent if we are looking for ANCA in PSC patients, primary sclerosing cholangitis. Radiology of uh, the biliary tree in uh, PBC is absolutely normal, whereas if you look at the radiology of the, uh, if you do a cholangiography, if you look at the biliary tree, there is strictures and beading of the large bile ducts in sclerosis and cholangitis. And smaller drugs, uh, ducts show pruning, that is they have been, they appear as if they have been uh, cut very sharply and they have been trimmed, that is what is the appearance of smaller ducts, whereas larger ducts show beading because of strictures in between. There is one stricture and the area next to that stricture is slightly dilated. So, it looks like a bead. It looks like a necklace of pearls. That is the appearance on cholangiography, cholangiogram in PSC, primary sclerosing cholangitis. Duct lesions. Uh, in PBC, we find florid duct lesions and loss of small ducts only. Okay. Larger ducts are generally spared in primary biliary cirrhosis. Whereas, in primary sclerosing cholangitis, there is inflammatory destruction of the extrahepatic bile ducts uh, and large intrahepatic bile ducts. The larger ones in the liver and those which come out of the liver and join together the, uh, the right and left hepatic ducts join together to form the common hepatic duct. Uh, then it joins uh, with the cystic duct to form the common bile duct. All of them are going to show changes. So, the larger extrahepatic biliary tree as well as the larger intrahepatic biliary ducts are showing changes. What kind of changes? Inflammatory destruction. There is a lot of inflammation in PSC. There is destruction of these ducts. They are fibrotic. There is obliteration because of intense fibrosis around. They get obliterated. That's why that uh, beaded appearance on radiology. Okay. There can also be uh, small uh, changes in the medium and smaller intrahepatic uh, ducts in PSC. So, these are very important uh, points to be remembered about PBC and PSE and lot of MCQs can be solved from this table. Yes, so the answer is primary biliary cirrhosis for anti-mitochondrial antibodies. Moving on, lymphocyte predominant subtype of Hodgkin's disease is characterized by lymphocytes. Let me repeat the question. Please have a relook at the question clearly before you look at the options. We are talking about lymphocyte predominant subtype of Hodgkin's disease. Here there is every chance you will confuse it with lymphocyte rich Hodgkin disease. No, it is not lymphocyte rich. So, at this point before I go to the options, let me very quickly tell you the classification of Hodgkin's currently how it goes in the WHO. Current WHO, I will be using the board. Current WHO takes Hodgkin's and divides it into two broad categories. Those two broad categories are classical Hodgkin, classical Hodgkin lymphoma and NLPHL that is nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. 
this disease is entirely different from classical which we were knowing since ages this classical has four subtypes which we always used to remember in the classification <coughs> first is nodular <coughs> sclerosis type second is mixed cellularity lymphocyte rich lymphocyte depleted okay so classical has four subtypes nodular sclerosis mixed cellularity lymphocyte rich lymphocyte depleted <coughs> this is an altogether entirely different entity now in the present question they are asking about this entity lymphocyte predominant okay don't confuse it with lymphocyte rich and even if they use the word nodular lymphocyte predominant hodgkin lymphoma don't confuse the word nodular with nodular sclerosis which is a variant of classical okay so we'll set aside the classical we'll go to the nlphl on which the question is based okay getting back to our question um ppt yeah our question uh has four options cd15 cd30 cd20 and epstein bar virus 